Ever since I installed Linux Mint for my father, I started the journey of teaching him how to configure things on Linux. He will grab me whenever he needs, no matter if I was reading novel in bed, working, or in the shower. After using Linux Mint and MX Linux, he is slowly getting familiar with some basic configuration on Cinnamon and XFCE. Now it is the time for both of us to step it up a notch, installing and set up the whole system himself. And this is what happened. As mentioned in the previous videos, my father has two laptops. One is for watching TV shows online and the other is for browsing the internet. I've already covered the journey of him using Linux to watch TV shows. Let's see what happened on the second laptop this time. This time I chose Manjaro for him. There are several reasons behind it. First, Manjaro is the stabilized Arch Linux. It pulls all the tested and stabilized packages from Arch Linux repository. I won't be worrying about it breaking down every time he updates the system. Secondly, its flagship version is XFCE, a desktop environment my father has got used to already. Thirdly, we have an Ibsen photo scanner. Even though Manjaro is not technically purely based on Arch Linux like Endeavor OS, it still has access to AUR which might have the highest possibility that I was able to find driver for. Let's start with the installation. After booting up with USB, I pointed him to choose Manjaro in Ventoy. Because this laptop has an NVIDIA GPU in it, I told him to boot with proprietary driver. Without any of my instruction, he saw the welcome page and quickly changed it into Chinese and found the installation button which to my surprise is quite fast. Facing the graphical interface installation application, he got so much confidence about going through the installation process. He told me that he thought all Linux distributions require installing through terminal, and I was speechless about his common knowledge on Linux. Then I spent some time explaining the options on partitioning and user setup pages before he could finish the setup. I told him to replace everything on the disk and gave him some basic introduction on the file systems Linux uses. After the installation, I told him to use PadMac to update the packages. Then I set up the VPN for browsing the internet. I found out that VPN always starts up automatically when the system boots up. I told him I planned to fix it before I had the time, and he decided to try himself. After I got home, he told me he couldn't fix it and shared his approach, that he was searching for the VPN auto startup file in the Linux system on the search engine. After giving some thoughts, I realized that this is a common issue among new Linux users, that they are familiar with Windows and Mac OS, so they thought everything in the system should be handled by the system and the system is a whole which oversees everything. So I decided to sit down with my father and do some proper introductions for him. I told him the general philosophy of Linux is to have each module taking over a small section of the functionalities for the system. This is the beauty of using Linux, that user have the freedom to choose from several products for a specific task. For example, in the same distribution, users can use XFCE, MATE, KDE, GNOME, and even window managers to manage the window. I installed Budgie on my MX Linux just to show the difference to my father on his MX Linux on his other laptop. Users can also choose different technologies to handle sound, video, and internet. This means that if you want to change the behavior on your system, you should start with the component that handles the behavior. Do not go straight onto the system level. I remember I was in the same boat. I was always searching the Linux issue with a distro name in the beginning of my search term. Because each module or component is responsible for a specific task, then usually they will have their own set of configurations. So if you want to change a behavior, go check the setting in this component instead of going to the search engine and check if anyone has answered this question. Because searching on the distro level may only work when you are using those popular systems like Ubuntu, Manjaro, or Pop OS. If you really want to search a solution online, study which component is used by the system. In this case, it's the network manager. And then do the search based on the component you are using. 
After this, I disable the VPN from automatically starting up by going into the VPN settings in Network Manager. This was a good session for him. With the understanding of Linux components, my father started fiddling with the XFC panel bar in Manjaro. Although he still doesn't know the term XFCE, but he realized Manjaro is using the same desktop environment as MX Linux on his other laptop. So he started to customize it to fit his preference. You can check out this video on why I swapped Linux Mint to MX Linux for him. MX is such a simple and user-friendly distribution. Even I got super impressive by how good it is. He told me with the knowledge I gave him, he could mimic all the Windows 10 bar functionalities now on Linux. He was quite happy because he could move the bar to the right with auto-hiding, pin his favorite applications on it for quick access, and was able to change the order on it easily himself. When I was planning this video, I was just thinking about setting up everything for him using an Arch-based Linux based on his use cases, just like the other video. Now with the successful session, I'm thinking if I could challenge both of us to have another session on a UR. Other than Ibsen driver, he has the need to use some popular applications from China, which was one of the reasons I chose Manjaro for him after searching them on AUR website. To teach him AUR, I needed him to have the knowledge of Package Manager. And in order to have some senses of Package Manager, he needs to know what is distribution. So I started the second session from the very beginning. What is Linux and what is distribution? the different package managers that each distribution is using. From Debian, Arch, Pacman, Pamac, and the UI interface of Pamac, to finally AUR, the whole session lasted 40 minutes in total. And the reaction from the student is that he did understand everything, but without using it, he's afraid of forgetting it fast, which makes sense to me. I didn't expect him to remember everything either. I just wanted him to know how to use AUR in Manjaro while having some background knowledge in the meantime. I showed him how to install the application he needs on Pamac right after that. Thanks to the Pamac GUI, I could sit there and watch him installing things he need. Then we took out the scanner and tried finding the driver, which is quite hard and I'm still in progress of it. Finally, we had a third session on Flatpak. We revealed the knowledge of Package Manager from our second session. Without any doubt, he did forget almost 90% of the terms, which is totally understandable and fine, because he learned so much faster this time. And it was quite simple for him to understand the issue Flatpak is trying to solve with previous knowledge. He was able to use Pamac to install Google Zoom from FlatHub without any issue. When I first started this channel, I had the idea of teaching Linux on YouTube. I then realized how stupid that idea was when I was creating the video on Gen2 because there are so many people way smarter than me. And after this time, I realized not only that I didn't have enough intelligence to figure out some Linux issues myself. Teaching people Linux also requires extreme patience, especially when the student needs multiple sessions to understand a concept. Yes, as seasonal users, we know the basics of what's what, but not the most people who have never tried it. Lots of them still think Linux installation requires command line even in 2022. So there's still a long way to go for all of us if we want to popularize Linux. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next time. Bye.